Good morning, you guys. It's your boy Bill Mahari here, representing Mahari Nation Sports Podcast. Much love to the entire LBBC and the entire basketball community. If you want more basketball content, tune in to Basketball Conversations every Friday night, 9 p.m. Central Time. This is where we discuss basketball-related topics, news, debates, and everything else in the world of basketball. And the condensed season has returned, so we're going to be talking about a lot of that on tonight's show. All right? We're going to discuss about the awards show and and much more. All right? So stay tuned to that. And also, apologies for my two days of not making no videos. You know, work has been kicking my butt, you know, the last couple of days. So, you know, finally rested, charged up, and we about ready to go. We got this condensed season, like I said, it's finally returned, and we got a lot of stuff to talk about. So stay tuned for that, though, guys. But this is going to be another episode of Morning Historical Perspective. You know what I'm saying? It's, a lot of you guys know it's one of my favorite, you know, sections of the show where I talk about great players, teams, series, anything you want to talk about, all right? So what we're going to discuss about this week is one of my favorite shooters, you know, during the 90s. Now, you know, he was the kind of guy that, that was kind of, you know, was under the radar, but he was a lethal shooter. And his name was Glenn Rice, all right? Many of you remember Glenn Rice during his time with the Hornets and during his time with the L.A. Lakers during Shaq and Kobe's first championship uh, season, okay? But this guy was actually much more of an underrated player than people tend to give him credit for, all right? And I'm hoping to give you guys a little bit more perspective about this, about how great of a player how great of a player he was, you know, during his time in the NBA. But to start all that, um, Glenn Rice, you know, was pretty much born from Jacksonville, Florida, okay? And... He, he, there was, there was a lot of false perceptions that he was actually born in Michigan that did not turn out to be the case. Um, he, you know, was born in Jacksonville, Florida, where he lived with his parents, you know, in Benton until his family moved to Flint, Michigan when he was a 12 year old. All right. You know, he went to two different elementary schools and both of his parents were basically from, from Benton. Um, I think it was from, from Benton, uh, Florida or Benton, or Benton, uh, uh, Michigan. Let's check out. Yep, Benton, Michigan. Just make sure to get it right. But the funny thing about what Glenn Rice was is that Glenn Rice actually had his intentions to play football, and he, you know, grew up, you know, admiring Barry's. Uh, Marge grew up admiring Eric Dickerson as a as a youngster and wanted to be a football player. And what pretty much saved, you know, his athletic career somewhat is based on an in, uh, on an injury. Um, he was into football and he wanted to be an NFL player, but when he was pretty much in the sixth grade, all right, he broke his leg, you know, playing football and was kind of forced to play basketball as a sixth grader during, when he first moved to Flint and he didn't take it seriously. He just played it because he just wanted to have fun with it. His main passion was actually for football and he didn't want to play basketball in the seventh and eighth grade. But after he played, after he broke his leg when playing football during the summer, after the eighth grade, it pretty much prompted him to play basketball. And what he talked about in one of his columns there, he pretty much said, when I got to uh, Holmes Junior High School in the ninth grade, a lot of the guys knew me from playing, from, knew me from playing from the park playing. They were like, look, man, you are going to go out for the team because it makes no sense you for you not to sign to play and make the team because you are too good. And I was like, I might as well try this. And I, and I decided that I was going to give it a try. And man, I started loving it. Things were coming so easy. Shooting, shooting became easy. I started to learn, learning how to run play. That was like, wow, maybe I should have given this basketball thing a chance. From there, it was really where it just took off. And took off it was. Um, Glenn Rice, as you guys, as, as you guys, you guys have said, have, have heard from me, he was a late starter in basketball as a youngster. And when he finally decided to give up football and play basketball, that's when his trajectory went upwards. Um, he became a household name in Flint uh, Northwestern High School, where he earned 1985 Mr. Basketball Honors in Michigan and led Northwestern to back-to-back state titles, which also featured a rider featured Jeff Grayer, who went on, became, went on to become Iowa State's all-time leading scorer and an NBA player, all along with Anthony Pendleton, who played at USC, and former NFL player Andre Risen, who basically played at Michigan State for both football and basketball. So, yeah. So, yeah, I think basketball worked out pretty well for him, okay? <laughs> so, when he decided to commit to Michigan in 85, he was a starter for three of those seasons. And when he 
played in Michigan, he became the school's all-time leading scorer with 2,442 points. And he ranks Michigan an all-time leader in several categories, career scoring, a single season for points with 949 points during the 88-89 season, first in single season field goal made 363 during that same year, and single season field goal attempts with 629, and season career season single season three point field goal percentage was 51.6 percent and he's second all-time in career field goals made and second single season three point field goals made with 99 made three pointers all of them during that 88 89 season when he helped lead michigan to an improbable one to the national championship and i did it i did a historical with respect to about the 88 89 uh michigan wolverines team so you can go ahead and check it out in the archives but what, during that entire run, um, Rice was basically voted as the tournament's most outstanding player by the Association Impressive All-American. And he averaged 25.6 points per game while shooting 58% from the floor and 52% from three-point range. Just phenomenal scoring. And during that entire run to the 89 championship, he scored an NCAA record 184 points in tournament play. A record to this day still stands. All right? and in February 20th of 2005, Michigan retired his number 41 jersey in the Raptors at Chrysler Arena. And this guy was pretty much was going to be a mid-first rounder. But after that historical run that he helped lead Michigan to the title, his stock uh, his stock uh, in the draft rose significantly and became a top five selection. And when he went to the draft in 89, after his senior year, he was selected fourth overall by the Miami Heat. By that time in the 88-89 season, um, the NBA had already ex- added four NBA teams to to the ex- to the, due to expansion. It were the Charlotte Hornets, the Miami Heat, the Minnesota Timberwolves, and the Orlando Magic. And when the Heat became when the Heat came into the NBA during their second year, all right, they needed some offensive help. And when he joined the young crew of Sherman Douglas and Ronnie Cycli. Rice would be pretty much common upon to pretty much deliver some of the scoring load, despite the fact that he was a rookie. And when he started in 60 games during his first year, he averaged 13.6 points per game behind behind Sherman Douglas and Ronnie Cycli. And they were pretty they were still pretty much lower than the fact they only won 18 games. But they saw a good improvement the next year when they won 24 games. And he started every game and his scoring load increased from 17.4. But the breakout year for the Heat would be 91-92 when they went on to win 38 regular season games and added younger players like Steve Smith from Michigan State and Brian Shaw, who became a future teammate of Shaq in Orlando and Los Angeles. And he became the leading scorer of the team when he averaged 22 and a half points per game and made 130, 155 made three-pointers, all right, leading into their first ever playoff series. Unfortunately, they were basically ran into the Chicago Bulls led by Scottie Pippen, Michael Jordan, and Horace Grant, who were entering their dynasty years. But he didn't do too bad during that series. But uh, afterwards, though, you know, Rice continued to increase his average from 21.1 points per game in the 93-94 season. All right. Then in 94-95, he went back to 22.3 points per game, which was 10th into the league. And Despite the fact he didn't play in the All-Star game, he did participate in the NBA three-point shootout and won the contest, contest, edging out against Hall of Famer Reggie Miller. And during that same season, in a nationally televised game on NBC against the Orlando Magic against Shaquille O'Neal and Penny Hardaway, he scored a career-high 56 points on 20 on 27 shots, including seven three-pointers. The 56 points at that time was basically an NBA season high for the entire year, which surpassed Michael Jordan's 55-point game game in Madison Square Garden against the New York Knicks. Just a guy that was a phenomenal scorer. The thing with Glenn Rice that he proved over time was is that he improved his ability to pull up and hit the mid-range shot, but also take it to the basket and pretty much get it fouled and draw free throws. By that time, he was proven more to be a shooter. That could shoot from anywhere, but wasn't a guy that you could trust upon to put the ball on the floor and attack and attack the defense. He slowly started to incorporate this game in the later stages when he was in Miami. Unfortunately, you know the Heat was not did not reach anywhere during his time in Miami. 
So before the start of the 95-96 season, the Miami Heat went through some serious changes. They hired uh, head coach and new general manager, Pat Riley, which still holds to this job to this day, and orchestrated a huge trade, which sent Glenn Rice and Matt Geiger to the Charlotte Hornets for basically for the disgruntled center Alonzo Mourning, who basically was fed up with how the Hornets were treating him at that point. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And when he started his time in, in Charlotte, he was paired up with Larry Johnson, and they pretty much won 42 games, and Rice led the team with 21.6 points per game and led his team in three-point field goals with 171 and shot 42% from three-point range. And finally, finally in 96, they made he made his first ever All-Star appearance. All right. And unfortunately, they were fit. They just felt sort of making the playoffs. But the 96 97 season would be his much, it be his huge breaking point of his career. It would be the one year that pretty much solidified him as one of the elite players in the NBA. All right. When the Hornets, when the Hornets went to work in the offseason, when they acquired veteran players like Vlade Divas and Anthony Mason, which proved to be a huge upgrade to their front line. Then they also fired, uh, What's the coach's name? Uh, Alan Bristow. And then brought in NBA legend Dave Cowens, who was pretty much an assistant for San Antonio up until that point. Then his, his, in, his minutes increased and his point average increased. He averaged basically, get this, 26.8 points per game. All right. Placing him third in the NBA in scoring while averaging 47% from three-point range and minutes played. And he won. He basically earned his uh, second All Star game. And then in 1997, in that same All Star game, in the third quarter of play, he went off. He went on to score an All Star game record: 20 points in the third quarter, 24 points in the second half to finish the game with 26 points, including eight of 11 from from the field, including four out of five from three point range. And his 20 points in the third quarter broke. The Philadelphia Philadelphia 76 record by Hal Greer with 19 and set that was set back in 68. By scoring 24 points and a half, he also surpassed the mark of 23 owned by both Will Chamberlain and, uh, and Tom Chambers as he earned All-Star MVP. No doubt that that was one of the biggest highlighting moments of his career. This guy could lit it up better than anyone. All right. And he was off to a bit of a slow start. And what really solidified him was that when his wife pretty much said, listen, you think you're doing anything? You're not doing anything. You're not doing a damn thing. And he just pretty much went on a tear and pretty much lit the basket up. His performance at that time was listed on this as 50 and said ranked as 57th among the memorable all star moments. And he helped lead the uh, Charlotte Hornets to 52 regular season vic to 54 regular season victories and another shot in the playoffs. Unfortunately, the luck in the playoffs didn't continue for Rice as they went on to get swept 3-0 by the New York Knicks in the first round. But his scoring average would continue. He would also average 22.3 points per game during the 97-98 season, which was eighth in the league and finished second in the league in minutes played and scored 16 points in the 98 All-Star game. And they went on to win 51 regular season games and finally, finally passed the first round against the first round of the playoffs as they beat the the uh, Atlanta Hawks in about in four games but they went up against the defending champion Chicago Bulls despite you know stealing game two of that series the Bulls went on to win four straight to take the series in five and pretty much and pretty much derailed their chances now at that particular time in the 98-99 season as you guys already knew it was pretty much a shortened lockout season and the horn and the right rice was pretty much off to a slow start, you know, due to injuries. And during that season, the Lakers made a shocking trade by trading both fan favorites Eddie Jones and Eldon Campbell to the Hornets for Glenn Rice. But the trade did not sit well with Laker fans because they pretty much loved both Jones and Campbell, and they felt that adding Glenn Rice was was basically pretty much giving up on the team at that point. But it was pretty much the he was pretty much the last piece of the puzzle because Shaq and Kobe needed a three point shooter to pretty much space the floor to let them basically do their thing, and pretty much and pretty much the uh, the elbow injury he had during that year that needed to have surgery was pretty much a risky trade at the time, but it turned out to be a good thing for the for the Lakers in the long run, even though they got swept in the '99 playoffs, new changes were coming in. 
Phil Jackson became head coach. And then the Lakers acquired Ron Harper and AC Green. And also former and also his former teammates in Miami, Brian Shaw and John Sally, to bring in some championship level experience to the talent of both Rice, Shaq, and Kobe. Okay. And despite the fact that he was getting lesser shots than in recent years, all right, he still he averaged 12.4 points per game, pretty much playing in a part-time role as the third wheel of the duo of Shaq and Kobe. All right. And finally, he was able to get past the first round of the playoffs and the second round. And pretty much helped lead the uh, L.A. Lakers to their first championship since 1988. All right. And even though during that game, during I say during that series, during that NBA Finals series, when Kobe suffered an ankle injury in game two, he helped he helped the Lakers score, tw- helped the Lakers to a victory by scoring 21 points in the second at the second score behind Shaq. And he didn't do too bad himself. You know what I'm saying? But the problem with Len Rice was is that he was not a good defender. And he was slow on his feet, and pretty much, pretty much that there was a lot of drama behind the scenes because Phil Jackson didn't didn't like Glenn Rice's defense, and he would keep him keep Rice in you know on the bench for much of the fourth quarter because of his lack of defense. That's why you saw a lot of Rick Fox, you know, in the fourth quarter and deep into the playoffs. And pretty much, pretty much that uh, Rice was pretty much felt like that his time with LA was pretty much used up. And he was pretty much more upset when they basically when the Lakers exercised a seven million dollar option instead of letting him become a free agent. And pretty much the Laker fans, you know, were not sold on rice at that time, you know, basically off of the trade of Eddie Jones and, you know, his inability to, you know, play defense and perform in a triangle offense was pretty much the precipitated his trade to the New York Knicks. And pretty much at that time Injuries were slowing down, age was slowing him down, and he became a six-man role. And despite playing playing 72 games and averaging 12 points per game, his role was not clearly defined. And he struggled to pretty much find his niche there. And he didn't last too long. Only lasted about one year until he was traded to the, you know, the Houston Rockets. And pretty much afterwards, you know, he was pretty much got starter minutes, but he pretty much his production declined in the next three years when he was in Houston and when he was with the L.A. Clippers during the 03-04 season. But the bottom line is this, though, guys. Despite, you know, how his career pretty much ended, you know, you know, on the downside afterwards, you cannot dismiss the fact that Glenn Rice is pretty much a streaky shooter. Now, is he in discussion of all-time great shooters? Unfortunately, no. But when he was on his game, and when he was living up the basket and pretty much was wide open for three-point shots, you could trust that he was going to make a high percentage of those three-point shots, all right? Now, if you put him in a, uh, top, in your top 10 or top 20 greatest shooters of all time, you know, I wouldn't argue with that. But if you say that he's a top five shooter, that's where I disagree. Because to me, Ray Allen, Steph Curry, uh, Clay Thompson, Larry Bird, all those guys were great shooters than Glenn Rice. But you cannot dismiss the fact that Glenn Rice was pretty much one of the most underrated players, you know, during his time. You know, he helped lead Michigan to a national championship and won an NBA title. And he savaged an all-star game record that still holds even today. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, though, guys, you know, Glenn Rice was pretty much a really an excellent and efficient scorer throughout his time. And when he was given opportunities, you know, to get to get to get shots up, he could fill up the basket more than any other player you know, during that time and a very well-respected score and player throughout the NBA. So that's pretty much how I have for that for now. But tell me what you guys think in the comment section.